Hello and welcome to another Caseware webinar. Today's webinar uh, is about an intro to Note Builder Advanced. My name is uh, James Wright. I'm one of the education and media technicians uh, for Caseware. I'll be hosting today's webinar, but the uh, the presenter for today will be uh, Tom Jeffrey, who's uh, also one of our education and media technicians. Just a slight bit of housekeeping before we get going today. If you've been on a webinar before, you'll know this, this spiel. But uh, if you've got any questions, uh, do feel free to pop them in the chat feature, in the Q&A feature, sorry, uh, that you should see across the bottom bar on Zoom there. Um, I may not get back to you straight away on the on the uh, answers to your questions. It's normally what we do is we have a, a, a Q&A period towards the end of the webinar, and we normally hold all the questions until then. So do feel free to, to ask your questions. Um, but we'll go through them at the end. And any questions uh, that we don't get to during the webinar, we'll answer and put up uh, on the uh, handout that will go on our help site. So now just to hand over to Tom to run through the agenda for today. Thanks, James. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. As James said, we're going to be looking at an introduction to Note Builder Advance today. So um, we're not going into uh, any advanced detail, although we do have additional content available that we can um, point you in the right direction of uh, if uh, you wanted to um, to, to uh, go beyond the, the basics. But we are going to be covering an overview of Note Builder Advanced today, um, explaining a bit what uh, more about what it's about, uh, what you would use it for. And we're going to build a very simple note I'm also going to show you how to drop that into a set of accounts and also how you can share that uh, so that it can be dropped into multiple sets of accounts, which is really what it's all about. It's about efficiencies and about time saving. We've got a uh, very good turnout today. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we have still got people coming in from uh, the waiting room. So uh, one thing to point out is we are recording the session. So if you miss any of it or if you want to revert back to any of it, then you can do so via the recording, which will be available on the help site in the next day or so. And also we've got our YouTube channel. So I've got one slide that I'm gonna show you. It's not a slide heavy presentation, <clears throat> excuse me. So what, when and why, who, where and how? Note Builder Advanced. So what is Note Builder Advanced? We, uh, it's a tool that we've created to provide functionality for creating custom notes and applying those notes to multiple sets of accounts. It does include advanced functionality. So where there is basic functionality, pre-existing functionality in, in accounts advanced to add in uh, notes and manipulate them, you have got advanced functionality within Notebook Advanced, for example, adding your own manual tagging. Um, and there are, as I say, there's lots of resources available to um, explaining to you how to get the most from your notes that you create in this tool, but it's very powerful. There's lots you can do in there. And we're going to be showing you some of those features today. Uh, when and why would you use Note Builder Advance? So caseware, of course, we are. Um, the, the idea is that we're compliant when it comes to offering the minimum disclosure uh, for our standard content. But you may want to create your own version of a standard um, note or disclosure that we have in the accounts or add your own additional disclosure. And that's what this tool is designed for. So uh, who's going to be using Note Builder Advance? Well, that's anyone with access to any accounts advance template. So that's company accounts advance. You've got IFRS, you have Charity and Academy. So any accounts advance template, you have the um, ability there to use the Note Builder Advance tool to create standard notes for use across multiple engagements. So how do you use it? That really brings us on to the demo, which is what I'm going to be showing you now i'm going to jump into my file so if i just share the relevant screen and hopefully hide that for later hopefully you can see my rs transport limited file all good there tom thanks james and um i'm in the case view so the accounts uh, case view document at the moment but actually i'm going to go back to working papers i'm going to start here note builder advanced is accessible in no less than three or no fewer than three different ways. So you can access via the accounts document, which um, I'll show you in the next few minutes. You've also got the option if you're using the accounts advanced dashboard to go to other docs and to note builder here. The reason why I, uh, I pointed it out that way is that you, you may be, for example, working on an audit advanced engagement that has accounts included. So your dashboard may be different. 
Um, so if you're using the accounts advanced dashboard, you can go to other docs and then note builder. If you're not using the accounts advanced dashboard, uh, then you can go to the address bar at the top and you can simply type in note builder and it will open the tool for you. We're going to go to the accounts document here and we are going to just wait for it to load. We're going to go to the note tab at the top and then we can see we have this create option. So this purple create button, that's to open note builder. And what's going to happen now is it will open in a separate case view document. So it's not opening the tool within the accounts. So it's worth pointing out, you have a separate tab here. So we've got the accounts document open over here. And we've got our note builder open separately. So we're working on this note, preparing it outside of the accounts. The idea is that we'll create a note that we are using effectively as a template to be dropped into a set of accounts. So at the moment, this isn't connected to the, the accounts for RS Transport. So we'll also see that the toolbar is in purple at the top. You'll see that pop up in the accounts a bit later on when we drop the note in. Um, so if it's got a purple toolbar, then that's indicating that you're working with a note builder advanced note. And what you'll see when you first fire it up is a standard two row, two column table. You could start editing from this point. So you could uh, add in more rows, add in more uh, cells. You could uh, configure it and sort of start from this very um, simple template that pops up at the beginning. But you could save yourself time by going to uh, a uh, loading a, 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 a profile that is a predefined sort of starting point based on some some popular notes that you would see within this tool. We'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, first of all, I'll just point out to you this KL button on the left here. So KL, or Knowledge Library, you may have seen that pop up before. So any notes that we have in the accounts, or the standard ones as well, are based on Knowledge Libraries. So uh, a Knowledge Library contains all the information for that note and, and perhaps the tables that are included in there as well. So what we're going to be doing today is creating our own Knowledge Library and that will simply become a file that sits within our caseware installation. This is our custom knowledge library folder, and uh, that's where it will be appearing when we save it. So we'll revisit that a bit later on. So you can load a knowledge library that you've already created, or you can save the one that you're currently working on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've got profiles. So a profile is for, uh, well, in this case, it's going to be for the table that we are creating that's going to sit within our note. But today we're going to just be creating a very standard, uh, very simple KPI note that we're going to drop into our accounts. And uh, again, if you're working on a table here and you want to save it as a profile that you can drop into other knowledge libraries, you can do so. But today we're going to be using the load option to load in one of these pre-built templates, which will save us some time because some of the work has already been done for us. As you can see here, going into the load config, you have we've got nine different options here. So you could load in this uh, tangible. We've got a couple of tangible fixed asset note um, layouts that's already predefined within the product. We've got one there for charities and academies. We've also got some um, some group, <coughs> excuse me, some group notes, um, a few sofa uh, notes there. Again, we've got charities and catering for charity and academy disclosures. Subsidiary undertakings is quite a popular one. Um, but the one that you will find is uh, really versatile and excellent starting point for a lot of new notes that you're creating. And the one we're going to use today is the basic two column notes currently a prior year. And you can see a preview of it at the top there. So if we confirm, that's going to load that in for us. And um, what we can see is we've got um, multiple rows for inputting our row descriptions. We've also got our currently and prior year columns currently including input cells. So if we saved this out and built it into or dropped it into our set of accounts as it is, then that's what it will look like. Um, it Will it be expecting you to put in your row descriptions and put in all your figures manually? So what we need to do now is tailor it to have the right behavior, to the right formatting, and then that it's pulling the figures that we want from the right places. So the tailoring starts with, oh, it's also worth pointing out that the format here is um, mirroring this uh, another uh, versatile element of this note is that it's, it's mirroring the formatting that we have in the 
uh, standard accounts. So you, we've got the correct indent, we've got the correct uh, layout for the underlines and that sort of thing. So we'll start tailoring it by going to the configure option here. <clears throat> and what we can see is a, uh, a preview of our columns and our rows here. We've also got a subtotal at the bottom, and we'll talk about that in, uh, very shortly. You've got your key here if you're wondering what the different colors mean. So the <clears throat> the subtotal is in this sort of uh, goldy color. It looks gold on my screen. It might look slightly different on yours. Um, and what we can do here is we can manipulate the formatting of multiple um, rows, columns, cells. So we can select multiples here if we wanted to configure um, behaviors of those areas within this table. You can select a whole row, you can select multiple rows, a column or multiple columns, or you can select the entire table by using this box in the top left. We can also insert or delete rows, which is pretty self-explanatory, but we will point out that if you have, so for example, if we populated this first row and then we um, we had, uh, we decided to highlight it, say I highlighted that first row, and I wanted to insert a new one, it's going to um, mirror what was populated in that initial row that we'd selected. So you'll have the same description and the same um, calculations for the way that the figures are populating. So it's worth just double checking that you're not duplicating disclosure within your table. In this example, we're going to uh, reduce the number of rows that we're using here, which I'll do in a moment, but you can also do the same for inserting and deleting a column. So if I clicked on, let's just close that for a sec. If I wanted to insert a new column after column B, if I clicked column B and then insert and then confirm, you can see as with the uh, uh, what I was explaining with the rows just now, it's duplicating what was in that column B that I selected. So we've got two lots of 2022. Um, it's duplicating the uh, header for the currency and it's duplicating, it would be duplicating everything else um, in the cells below. The only area that's not going to duplicate is the subtotal here. So talking of subtotals, if you wanted to see what makes up your subtotal in your table, then you can select your sort of gold subtotal there, and it will highlight all of the cells that make up that subtotal. If you decided you wanted to perhaps take one of those off, or just define which of those cells make up that subtotal, you can do so here. You can reselect if you want to. With our new column C, we can select here. Uh, actually, we just need to use this little X over here in the top right just to remove my selection. If we selected our new subtotal in column C, what you'll get is some handy guidance at the top. So it will say, okay, you need to um, <clears throat> effectively design, uh, uh, define which cells are going to be making up that subtotal. So again, we can select the ones that we want to use uh, for that figure at the bottom. You can uh, move away from this. So if we went over to select cells, we went off to do something else, and then we went back to subtotal and selected it again, it will remember our selection. So there's no uh, sort of save uh, as you go along here, providing you're keeping this window open, switching between tabs will remember what you've done on each one. Um, we're not going to worry about this column C because that was just for demonstration purposes. So actually we want to delete our column C. So we're uh, left with our, sorry, into columns. It would help if I selected the right uh, menu, but if we go to our column C and we select delete instead and confirm, we're back to our current year, prior year. We've also got our roll forward option at the end here. So our standard content in caseware will be rolling is designed to roll forward your current year figures into the prior year column when you roll the file forward so you can define that behavior here as well so again you've got some guidance at the top so click on the cell in the table below to roll forward two so we would want to roll forward to for example c4 for our prior year figure there and then you've got your guidance at the top here just to confirm selecting the uh, the origin of the, the data that you want to reach that cell. So of course that would be B4. And then again, you can move away and you do do other things within the table here and you can return to roll forward. If I was to, to, to select C4, again, it would remember that uh, I've designated that it rolls forward from, from B4 to C4. You can, as it uh, says uh, here, to delete this link, you can deselect the, uh, the the cell that we've currently selected, which is the B4, 
um, and then we can select C4, so we've removed that behavior. So what we're going to do, we've returned to our selecting cells and we'll, as I sort of mentioned earlier, I think what I'm going to do for this example is we'll go with four rows. So I'm going to delete some rows here. Just keep deleting those until we have the four left that we need. There we are. We don't actually need a subtotal in our KPI note, although I am going to leave it there for this example to show you some formatting options a bit later on. So we'll leave that there. So we're actually happy with our layout of the note now. And then once we've um, uh, confirmed that, that that's the layout we want, the next step that I'm going to follow here is to define what, uh, how the, the figures populate some of the cells there. Now I'm going to populate the first three rows with figures from our mapping or from elsewhere in the file. I'm going to leave the fourth one as an input because I'll show you an example of something else a bit later on. So we go back to our select cells in the top left and we can select the six that I want to edit and confirm. Once you've confirmed, you've now got your options here for um, determining how those cells are behaving. So we have for example, input here, which we're going to go back to in a second. Uh, we can flip the value if it's appearing on the on the note and if it's not appearing as expected. So for example, if it's a minus when it should be a plus, how do we want zeros to appear? Um, so we've got a dash by default, but you can have it showing as a zero or blank. And whether it's an alphanumeric cell or whether it's a, a date, you, you've got uh, that option there as well, plus many others. We have got some uh, an overview of this menu in our getting started guide and that's something that we can share with you um, as part of the follow-up but what we're going to do for these this uh, the selected cells here the six is we we actually want to remove the input here so we want to set it to off now if you've selected the wrong cells or you've uh, you want to go back to the table and do something else you have this table configure in the top left so back to table configure. If you select confirm here, it's just going to close this screen and then you'll need to reopen it again. Um, you may be familiar with the mapping in working papers. If you're in the assigned mappings window, selecting OK confirms your um, your choices, but it also closes the dialog. So you use the apply instead. It's a similar principle here, but I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select confirm. It's going to have a think about it and it's uh, now applied my changes. It's given me my four rows. So the last one's going to be input. It's also removed the input behavior on these six cells here. So the next option for us is that we want to determine how these cells are populated. So I've selected my current year uh, cell here and we're going to go to the calculations option. Actually, before I do that, let's put in some um, let's put in some row descriptions. So this is our KPI table. So we're going to say turnover and gross profit and net assets. Um, this last row, actually, we're going to have as average number of employees, um, which is uh, explains why we don't want the subtotal one of the reasons why we don't want the subtotal. And that's something that I'll type in on the face of the accounts when we drop the note in. Um, we also have some other uh, editing options up the top here before we go into calculations. You do have the option to add in user text areas above and below. And if you decide to populate those now with text, then and you save your knowledge library and drop it into a set of accounts, then that text will appear for, for every set of accounts that you're using the note with, uh, or you can leave it blank and then that's effectively prompting uh, the person preparing that set to put in the narrative. We also have the option to add a paid break before and after the note. So if it's a particularly large note, you may want to just um, have it populating on its own page. <clears throat> By default, we can see our title here is is skipping. So anything in the blue there is uh, is not printing at the moment. You do have the option to cycle whether you want the title to skip or print. Now that I've done that, you can see it's in black, which indicates that it is printing. We have got a number there. Now that number will be defined based on where the note lands in the accounts. And then you also have options for cycling through how the note number is behaving. So you can have it so that you uh, can modify the note reference and define 
um, where you want what you want it to be, or you have the option to completely hide the note number or pick up an appropriate note number based on where you are dropping it within the accounts. I'll just turn that off again for now. You can also change it to a financial statement note if you wish, which adds um, the relevant formatting for a financial statement note, but we're not doing that in this case. And you can also set the default skipping conditions for, for rows. So there may be a particular row that you want to skip by default or a column. You can also set the, the skip condition for an entire table within a note. And then when you're dropping it into your set of accounts, you then have the option to define or you have the option to toggle that on and off uh, within the, uh, the accounts themselves. You can set the row spacing, so spacing after the row that you've selected. You can also um, determine the uh, the subheader um, scale, whether it's if you've got a subheader, whether you want it to be large, medium, or um, you can turn the subheader off altogether. And then you can see we've got a bit of an indent here to, to match the correct styles. Um, but you can remove that indent or you can add it back in. And finally, which is not something we're going to go through today, but it's worth pointing out, you do have the option to attach a taxonomy to the note and manually tag. But back to our, standard, our simple note here, we're going to select our current year and go to calculations. Now the calculations screen looks very similar to the configure screen that we were in before. Configure screen really is designed to um, allow you to uh, uh, determine the behavior of um, the the note and in terms of its formatting and its layout uh, and the presentation whereas calculations is allowing you to select one cell at a time to determine how the figures uh, will appear so where they're pulling from uh, we're going to be using mapping today for a couple of the rows so Using this example, you've got the option here to add in uh, additional rows and columns and, and look at your subtotals and roll forward as before. But really, we're just going to be focusing on how to populate these cells. So I've selected my turnover and I'll hit confirm. What you'll see now is a, uh, a, a mapping and it's a, a dialogue that's allowing you to pull from mapping within the file. So a bit like when you're looking at custom calculations or if you're looking at specialized rows on the face of the accounts and you can um, decide where you want the uh, the figures to come from. Similar principle, we've got our mapping table here and currently it's sitting at the top level, but you can drill down to level two, three, and even a full map number if there's a specific um, mapping number or that you want to pull from. We're gonna stick with the top level for this example. Now this is a turnover row. So we want to pick from our L codes so I'll put L in the map number cell there. Now in this file, or in our TB that we've got in working papers for this file, we've only got figures in our sales. Um, but again, worth pointing out that we're going to be using this note as a, a basis or as a template to drop into multiple sets of accounts. So you may have TBs in other sets of accounts where you have got rent receivable figures or you have got fees receivable. So if I was to select the current year cell here, and confirm that it's current year and I want to add it in. It's going to take that that uh, that negative figure there and it's going to populate that cell from YR0 being current year. You've got YR1 for prior year, YR2 for prior year two. We're not worrying about prior year two for this note because it's only two column. You can replace those with CY and PY for current year, prior year if you prefer, but by default it's, uh, it's year zero, year one, and then you've got L01. So what that's saying is that all of these sales codes, so any codes that fall under L01 are going to be making up that cell. But actually, what we want to do is pull that figure from any L code. So it will look at all the L codes. And if you've got a file that has uh, figures somewhere else, for example, fees receivable, it will be adding that to the calculation as well. So we simply go down to the calculation here and remove the O1. So we can see that it's pulling from all of the Ls. Again, we can hit confirm here, and that will take us back to the uh, it will take us back to the note. So it's going to close this dialogue, and it's going to take us back to the note. But we don't want to do that because we need to uh, define the same for the prior year. So we've got the table configure in the top left. We can now see that that figure is pulling through to turnover. We'll select the prior year cell and confirm, and we'll do the same again. Um, so we'll select our prior year cell, 
confirm, and then we'll take out our own one. So it's pulling from all of the old codes. I will hit, hit confirm here just so that we can see how it pulls through to the note. We won't worry about the subtotal for now. We'll, we'll deal with that later, but we can see we've got the figures coming through for turnover. Um, but something that you will notice is that they're coming through as negative. So um, the way that it's uh, the way that it's pulling the figures from the TB and it's populating it, um, it's going to by default show it as a negative figure. But we want to flip that so that it's showing as a positive. So you can go back to your configure, and then we will select our two cells and confirm. And then we've got our flip value option that we saw earlier. So we'll change that to yes and confirm. And you can see now we've got it populating correctly uh, as we'd like it to. Now we're going to do the same for gross profit, but this time it's made up of multiple map numbers. So we'll go to our calculations and <clears throat> we're selecting our current year for gross profit and then confirm we're back into here. So this is going to be made up of L codes and N codes. So we'll go to our um, to our L's here. So we're using our turnover and our cost of sales codes. So we'll select our current year and add that in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we also want to add in our cost of sales. So we know it's M, but you can um, uh, actually go in. You can type in cost of sales into the map description here if you're not sure what code it is, and it will filter with the right results. We've got exactly the same thing happening here with cost of sales. So we only have cost of sales sold uh, figures, but you may have figures in some of these other ones. So we're going to select the current year and I'll add that in. And we're going to repeat what we did before, take out the O1 from the L and also take it out from the M. Now, what I'm going to do is a little shortcut here for, for prior year is I'll highlight and copy that and use that in a moment because uh, you could just go through and, and do that again for prior year, but we'll go back to table configure. You can see the figures now pulling through and we'll go to our prior year confirm and we'll just paste that in. So we've got most of the calculation correct, but we just want to change it to YR1 for prior year for both of those. And then we can confirm. Again, we've got our um, issue there with it um, needing to be flipped. And we could actually have applied this to the, to the whole uh, table earlier, uh, the four cells at once, or even uh, uh, you could go for the whole table if you wanted to just to apply this flip condition. Uh, but I've done it a row at a time. So we're going to go back into configure. And then we'll select our currently a prior year for gross profit, confirm that and then go to our flip at the top. Now that's showing as we as we want it to. So net assets, we're going to handle that slightly differently for this note. So rather than pulling it from mapping or any figures that or figures that we have in the TV, we're actually going to pull it from the accounts themselves. <clears throat> so you might be thinking, well, we're we're uh, creating this note outside of the accounts at the moment. So how does it know where to pull it from in the accounts? So what we're going to do is go into go to the face of the accounts. We're going to locate our net asset cells. So we'll go down to our balance sheet. We've got our net assets here. If we were to select our current year and go to tools and tech info, what we'll see is a cell number. That's balance sheet 1.e37. And if we go to our prior year tech info, BS1.G37. So we're going to make a pretend I'm making a note of those. And I'm going to go back to my note builder note. I've clicked on net assets for the current year calculations. Confirm that it's the current year that we want to edit. Now, instead of um, choosing map numbers from here, I'm actually just going to go straight down to my calculation field at the bottom and type in bs1.e37 and that's seeing that as a calculation it's worth pointing out if you if i was to put it in quotation marks then that's that's literally what it would put in the table so the cell would say bs1.e37 um so we'll take those out and we'll leave it as the calculation there 
And again, we're going to go back to table configure rather than closing this, this box and go to the prior year. You'll notice the preview hasn't updated. And the reason why is uh, the calculations there, but this note isn't linked with our accounts document. So it doesn't, it can't see that cell at the moment. What will happen is when you drop it into a set of accounts, it will then look for that cell reference and then populate the figure. Um, and that's what we should see a bit later on when we when we save our note and drop it into our accounts. So we're going to go to prior year and we'll do the same here. So BS1.G37 and confirm. So that calculation is there, but it's not updating at the moment because it will do when we drop it in, as I said. So um, we've got our average number of employees, right? We're going to leave that as input and we'll pop those in a bit later on. And yes, we've got a subtotal here. And, and uh, you might be thinking, well, it doesn't really make sense because we're, we've got our average number of employees row in there. And, and we we you may be making a note that has rows that you're not totaling up. So in our configure, um, you would, you know, one, op one option would be to remove that row entirely. Um, but what I've done is I've left it in just to show you, um, just to go back to the skipping row um condition button that i was mentioning earlier so you can cycle this skip row button between print skip or skip if zero so we can keep clicking that until the subtotal shows in blue which it does so that means when we drop it into the accounts that will skip by default you can also do the same for your underlines so i've skipped that now so as it stands all you'll you'll see um is turnover and gross profit you will also see the net assets printing because that will populate once we drop it in so that's all the editing we're going to do on our note uh, as it is so the next step is to go to your kl button and we're going to save our knowledge library i'm just going to call it kpis you have got quite a large box there to um, populate it with a name of your choosing save that and this is going to save it outside of caseware initially uh, so we i showed you this folder earlier in windows so in your caseware installation so by default or in my case it's the c drive we've got program files x86 caseware resources knowledge library and you can see we've got some custom um, other custom knowledge libraries in there but under the custom folder we can now see our note builder kpis note now, I've already got, got the accounts open. So if I was to go into accounts, and I'd say I wanted to go up to my uh, key performance indicators up here, and I wanted to insert my table note that I've just created, I'd go to add, and I'd expect to see it under user defined. But it's not there. Now, the reason why it's not there is because I've already got the accounts open. We've saved the note builder note outside of caseware for now. And what we need to do is establish that link so that uh, case view knows that that note exists. Two ways of doing that. You could uh, save and close the accounts and reopen them. And then it will then uh, recognize that that note is there for you to add. The other option is you can do a bit of a refresh on the toolbar. So you can go to tools and you can go to knowledge library update. And this will prompt to freeze the section that you've selected to check for updates. Now you may, if you haven't updated, um, perhaps if you've installed the latest EPAC, but you haven't applied all those updates, you might see that there's a big long list here of stuff that you're worried about taking because it might be content, but it will also have some functionality mixed in there as well. So you could, uh, you may have some, for example, mandatory tags or um, right-click menu updates, things like that, that keep the software running as it should be. Um, that really, uh, in this case, I've taken those updates, but we do have toolbar and style bar and header updates that will always pop up when you when you choose this option. Um, but actually, none of that's relevant in this case because we don't want to take any updates at all. You can deselect the whole thing. What will happen here is we'll deselect all and select OK. And rather than us prompting case view to apply updates, it's just going to have a little bit of a refresh. So it's establishing where we haven't selected any updates to take, so it's not going to do any of that but it's just refreshing. Uh, it's finished executing script in the corner there. And what we can do now is we can go back to our note tab at the top, go to our add 
and you'll see this user defined option is now there and we have our custom KPIs node. If I drop that into the file, moment of truth, you can see it's pulling in those mapped figures as we defined when we were building the note, but it's also pulling out our net assets because it now knows where those BS1.E37 and G37 cells are. The way that we've created the note, of course, we've still got these as blue input cells. You could actually change those to not be input, so they're just predefined rows. Um, and again, we've got some uh, bits of, of formatting and tailoring here that we could tidy up. Um, now, what you'll notice when you select within the note is that your toolbar at the top will turn to purple. That's to prompt you that you're working within a note builder advanced note. So you have got lots of other editing options that are available to you throughout the standard content. So, for example, you've got your title and note number options. So I can define how I want my title and note number to appear. But it's worth pointing out that any of those amendments that you're doing here are just for this set of accounts. Um, if you want to change that behavior as a standard for that note, then it would be a case of going back to Note Builder Advanced and then uh, amending your knowledge library. You've also got table options within here. So if you go to the table tab, it will look different to the table tab that you usually see because it's going to be mirroring the options that are available to you within Note Builder Advanced for editing the table. You can see here it's just confirming that that's a Note Builder Advanced note. You can go into calculations and you can change the indent and you can uh, amend things like skip conditions. Again, that's just for this note as it appears in this set of accounts. So if I was to change the indent here, if I didn't like the indent there, that's fine. I could remove it. But the knowledge library is still retaining that indent. So you need to go back and uh, update that. And then you could drop it again in the file and it would give you the new version. And then, of course, we've got our number of employees row that I added in that I left as input. So I could say what I want that to be. And then once I put in my figures, it's going to update. As you can see, the subtitle there is, is nonsense because it's uh, because of what it's adding together. So it would make sense if you were doing this properly it would be to uh, create this note without the subtotal there. And in terms of sharing the notes for use in other files, because this is in your uh, in Windows Explorer here, because it's part of your installation, it's just sitting in a folder, you can simply copy the file and then you can share it with somebody. So you could save it in a uh, central location. You could um, share it in, a, in uh, some external storage that you have um, or even send it to somebody and providing they save it in their the same path. So caseware resources, knowledge library, custom. And then the next time they open the accounts or the next time they refresh the toolbar, that will appear under the note tab and then it will appear under add and user defined. So that brings uh, me to the end of the content I wanted to go through with you today. I think that covers everything. And um, we've got a little bit of time available. So James, have we got any questions? Yeah, yeah we've got a, a few questions that have come in. Uh, the first one that I've got here, I believe was just asked uh, slightly before you went through the, uh, the, the roll forward process, but um, it's just one of our clients uh, saying that having a little bit of an issue doing roll forward to hopefully uh, the example you gave there solved that issue if not you can jump onto our help site uh, and i did track down the article it's a getting started guide for note builder uh, and it's article id 29 on there so uh, there is a section dedicated to rolling forward on there um another question that we have is can you remove the indent on uh, the title itself i believe that might be to do with you might have to remove the um the note number as well for it to shift the title over but we'll just give that a go on cool yeah so we've got the um uh, so on the note reference here so if you wanted the insert title here to appear indent uh without the indent so without the the number is that was that the question sorry, yes James. yes sorry yeah that's that's the one so as you can see we've got the number option here and um you've got cycle options here to cycle through so the first click changes it to um this uh ability to modify the note reference on the face of the accounts um, we can change it to no note number. In terms of an indent, I, uh, I'm i not sure whether we can indent it in the same way as you can do the table. What we'll do is take that one away yeah. and uh, we'll get back to, uh, back to you directly. 
we're also going to be using the uh we're going to be adding a q a document aren't we so i think we'll add it to that one that's fine um another question here uh how do i remove a subtotal uh that i've input incorrectly so if we go into so if you've sort of defined the subtotal incorrectly I, um we can go into our configure option here and then if we go to the subtotal tab at the top uh we've got our subtotals at the bottom here so if you've defined a subtotal incorrectly so let's say I'm selecting this one for the current year. Let's not worry about the contents of the table at this stage. But um, if we did want to, I mean, I'm, uh, there's all sorts of permutations here, but if we did want to um, retain this subtotal and, of course, not include the average number of employees or anything else that wasn't relevant, then you can just deselect the cells. So you go into here and then it will, when you select the subtotal, it's going to show you the, the cells that make up that calculation. And then you just deselect or select accordingly. Um, if you wanted to remove the subtotal entirely, um, then you would uh, just deselect everything that makes it up. Um, and then uh, you can, so as it says here, to deselect, to delete this subtotal, deselect all currently selected cells in the table below. So providing you remove all of the cells that make up the calculation, that would then remove the associated, associated subtotal. To get rid of the row entirely, if you didn't need a subtotal, um, you would go to your uh, delete rows tab and then you would just select the relevant row there. Great, thank you. Um, we've got another one here. Uh, is there an option for creating a report section rather than notes? And uh, I think it's also good to specify, it depends on the kind of report you're looking for, as we have options for making custom content for uh, things like the audit report. Um, so if you're going down that route, obviously jump on the help site, check out the uh, custom audit report guidance there. But if it were just a, like a, a completely custom report that a client wanted to um, to insert, is there a way to do that? Mainly just text based. So you can create your own custom, um, but you can add in your own custom text here. Um, if it's for reports, then actually we do have specific guidance for uh, the different reports within Accounts Advanced. So we have got a guide on the custom uh, audit report, custom directors report, strategic report, and so on. Um, so. Uh, that would be something um, that would be, uh, I think, if you're creating your own report from start to finish and you wanted to use that in every engagement or in multiple engagements instead of the standard disclosure, uh, then um, we can we can forward you the specific guidance for those. So please let us know if there's an example, if there's a particular report that you had in mind, and we'll uh, forward the correct guidance over to you. Perfect. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to answer all the questions that are remaining on there, but we will stick together a uh, Q&A handout document uh, that will be popped on our help site. Um, you can look for this webinar in the next couple of days or so, uh, just under the webinar section, um, and the, the link will be there. If you do have any questions or queries in the meantime, um, do feel free to use our support team as well. They're happy to help. Uh, and they can uh, help you just customize your uh, note builder notes within reason, obviously, uh, um, over a call. Uh, so what, what I'll do is I'll just steal the screen off of you there, Tom, and we'll go through the outro section. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. You should go and see my screen there. We've done the questions. Uh, just uh, in regards to any uh, upcoming webinars, do head to the caseware.com uh, forward slash uh, UK forward slash resources forward slash events uh, page there. Uh, alternatively, just go to uh, type in uh, caseware.co.uk. It will redirect you to the main site and select the resources tab there for events. Uh, you can sign up to any of our upcoming webinars. I do believe our next one's on rounding, I believe, Tom, correct if I'm wrong. Yes. Um, but we're, right. we've got quite a few uh, scheduled for the, the upcoming months, uh, so do feel free to join us on those. Um, we also have a LinkedIn page. That's a separate one from the Caseware, Caseware uh, main page. It's the client services, so we focus on all of the education uh, content we can provide you. Um, so you can cut through all the, uh, the other marketing governs and just focus on the training if you want to do that. Give us a follow there. Uh, we also have the Client Services YouTube channel as well, and that's where all of our quick vids uh, and guidance is uploaded, as well as any of these webinars. There's a webinar playlist on there, so feel free to, to take a look. 
Perfect. Uh, finally, on here is the uh, uh, the help site help.caseware.co.uk. If you have any uh, issues, you can just type uh, your queries into the search bar on there, or alternatively, use the, uh, the the messenger feature to talk to one of our um, live uh, support representatives there. Perfect. That brings us to the end. Uh, thank you from all of us at Caseware, and uh, hope you have a great day. All the best. Thanks, everyone. Take care.